keeps trying. I think that you know you can only keep trying. Sometimes you have uh, demands on your time that you can't really plan for or can't foresee. It's a lot of um, uh, time management skills. I think that uh, need to come into play. So I think that there's lots that I need to do on the work uh, balance uh, front. Yeah. So you you can you're telling your family throughout this program that you know it is a big concern for you and you're trying. Well, it is. It is <laughs> I think that like I said, when you've got children who are growing up, it's important yes. to uh, spend time with them and bond with them. But you know, from the outside, at least I must say that people think you're doing a fantastic job. Uh, so you uh, can take encouragement from that. Coming uh, to a different dimension, it's between business and social. Um, uh, you have a, a serious interest in some of the social processes, like your patronage of Sangeet Kala Kendra, uh, or uh, the new school that you took over in Bombay, or the one that you put up the international school. Recently, you took over uh, the management of Bits Pilani, and uh, I know you're very passionate about it. So how do you see that balance in you? No, I think that uh, I'm basically passionate about education. That's one thing I'm passionate about outside of uh, my work. And BITS is something that, uh, you know, is a very well-recognized, respected uh, uh, university in India. I think everyone knows about BITS Pilani. And uh, it's, it's again uh, built, been built over a few generations. Uh, and I'm particularly excited about BITS because I think that the whole awareness around education, the need for good education, for children, uh, the need for uh, higher quality education um, is much more today in India than ever before in the past. So I think that it's bits that uh, is the anchor of my, uh, you know, activity outside of work in terms of uh, the time that I'm able to spend on anything substantive uh, outside of the work uh, environment. Um, Sangeet Kalakindri is the other one, but. Uh, on that Sangeet business, there's also this uh, balance between personal life and public life. And uh, I know you're very fond of singing, you sing very well. Uh, you have your own interest in spirituality. And uh, how happy you feel about this balance, that being a private person, uh, doing things that you would like, and running a big, big empire. Well, first of all, I don't sing, <laughs> but I try to sing. <laughs> but uh, I think that, you know, I'm, I, that, that's the way it is for me. I'm a private person. So uh, outside of work, um, uh, you know, I wouldn't uh, want to be uh, in any ways in the spotlight or the limelight. Um, and I'm very passionate about what I do for me. Uh, you know, work and uh, home are pretty much an extension of each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't really see them as two different uh, compartments uh, for the better or for the worse. Um, but you know, I think it's important to be uh, the kind of person that you are and not go against, against the grain too much. And I think if you can do that, uh, if you're fortunate enough to be able to do that, then I think you should be a happy person. You indeed seem so. so. <laughs> uh, recognizing all this, uh, you know, is, uh, has been there. You have received a number of awards and probably the ones that one can think of the ET Business Leadership Award, or the Tata Award, the Singhani Award, or more recently Bombay Management Association Award, uh, or the Best Employer uh, Award. Uh, yet, uh, what are the, the ones that you covet? What would you really like to be known as? Because at 42, uh, most people don't come into your kind of leadership before this age. So you started at 28, and uh, this is just like the first inning. So the best is clearly yet to come. So how do you, what would you say to that? No, I think you're right. I think that uh, 40 is a good age because I think at 40 you start to, uh, you know, a uh, lot of things in life stabilize. You understand yourself better. I think you get your arms uh, around your work life, your personal life uh, uh, in a much more uh, cogent way than you've been able to do in the past. So I think that this is a good point um, Hopefully, hopefully for us as a group um, to take off from. And I see that uh, the next few years will be uh, the next phase of growth for the group. I think we're at a very interesting inflection point. Um, and given our situation, our comparative situation in our different businesses, I think that uh, we're going to see some very uh, high levels of growth uh, going forward in the next five, six years. India, you know, I mean, 
the one statistics that 83% of all business in the world is owned by families. In India, a very large number of businesses are family owned of various sizes and uh, one feels very happy that how businessmen have become more ambitious, uh, they're also wanting to be more organized. Um, so as a person with a great legacy and a great track record over the last uh, 15 years or so, what messages would you like to say? I think that uh, family owned and family managed, I think that's where the distinction needs to be very clear. And I think that family owned businesses have a huge amount of entrepreneurship, especially family owned businesses in India. I think that they're very driven, very passionate. And to make the scale change to the next level, I think it's important for families uh, to um, actually delineate the role between family members and uh, non-family members or professionals as um, they are called, not to say that uh, family members don't work professionally. But I think it's important to uh, make that transition in terms of attitude and mindset as to what the role of uh, non-family members uh, versus the family would be. Uh, would uh, it be a meritocracy? Would you make, uh, would you appoint people on the basis of merit? Uh, or would it be on the basis of uh, being a part of the family? So I think that whole clarity around that issue itself is a very big deal for family businesses to take the next step going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you like to tell the global investors? Uh, you have uh, explained that uh, how good you feel about the vantage position that you are in and uh, how the lopsided businesses will change. That's as far as the group is concerned. So this question enables you to answer either on that front or generally about, you know, since we have a lot of global investors here, along with a lot of Indian investors, of course, who are very, very significant part of the Indian market, what would you like to tell them about uh, either India or your group or anything else? I, I'd like to say that I think India is, uh, as we all recognize, at a very interesting uh, point in its uh, growth cycle. I think that what's happened over the last uh, one year, the fact that we have been able to sustain the shock uh, uh, so well, the fact that uh, we have uh, come out of it looking even fitter and stronger and relatively unscathed is a fact that hasn't gone uh, unnoticed um, uh, across the globe wherever we have our operations. I think there's a very clear um, message that goes out to investors that India has clearly bucked the trend, uh, that uh, the banking system in India is much healthier than uh, probably in most other parts of the world. The fact that our monetary and financial uh, fiscal prudence that we have shown maybe over the last 10 years has uh, stood us in very good stead. And the fact that you know India is one of the few economies to grow, continue to grow at 6%, 7%, double digit hopefully going forward in the next two years. Uh, India is an economy that uh, you cannot ignore. Uh, if you want to be part of a global growth story, then you've got to be connected uh, with India in one way or the other depending on uh, the kind of business uh, uh, that you're in. Also I think that very clearly in India and Indians uh, are recognized very clearly to be um, an intellectual hub, intellectual capital of the world. More and more overseas uh, people recognize Indians as high achievers uh, with a superior intellectual uh, bandwidth if I can call it that. Um, I think that India's story is just about unfolding. We've seen the IT story unfold. I think there's a huge opportunity in terms of India becoming a manufacturing hub uh, for the world. I think that uh, we have the track record. We have uh, uh, the ability to uh, have a low cost uh, uh, production base. We have the labor. We have the intellectual bandwidth. We have the natural resources. So the way I look at it going forward in the next couple of, uh, you know, maybe two decades, India will emerge as a major manufacturing hub for the world. Uh, even now we see industries moving from the west to the east, especially those that are asset in intensive. And I think manufacturing has great potential also in terms of uh, employment generation. And we have to remember that going forward in the next 10 years, we will have by 2020 uh, the largest young working force uh, anywhere in the world. We're going to have two-thirds of our economy that will be part of the working force of the country. 
and on the other hand you have western economies 